Hey kids, Caleb here from Game Club, and we're going to check out a very spooky game this evening. <laughs> yes, that's right, we're going to check out Bram Stoker's Dracula on Sega Genesis. I was a real big fan of the uh, book as a kid. I love how the book was kind of written from the point of view of like a, a diary entry or like a captain's log. It made it really realistic and convincing and kind of freaked me out as a kid when I read it. We go a step further here. The movie by Francis Ford Coppola, the same director as Godfather. I actually liked the movie with Gary Oldman as uh, Dracula. I thought he did great as Dracula. So, of course, being the uh, Sega Genesis nut I am, and liking Dracula, let's uh, let's check out the game on Sega Genesis. Bram Stoker's Dracula on Sega Genesis. Check it out. Bram Stoker's Dracula was a giant cluster from the start, developed by Psygnosis, Traveler's Tales, and Probe Software. The game was published by Sony when Sony used to actually just publish and develop games for other systems. This is before, of course, they had their PlayStation 1 slash Super Nintendo CD. The game was ported to all kinds of platforms, including the regular Nintendo, Super Nintendo, the Game Boy, the Game Gear, the Master System, the Genesis, the Sega CD, the Amiga, and of course, MS-DOS. It's an action platformer with quite obvious inspiration from games like Castlevania. The ports were pretty different between the Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo, but in this video we're looking at the Sega Genesis version. In this game you play as Jonathan Harker, you know, Keanu Reeves' character from the movie. Wow. And you're trying to get to Dracula and kill him. Go figure. And no, I'm not talking about a Castlevania game. I know, I know. Dracula was first, but still, Castlevania was a game first. This game, of course, was based on the movie License by Francis Ford Coppola, which featured Gary Oldman as Dracula and Keanu Reeves playing Jonathan Harker. Tom Waits playing Renfield. Now for me it's really hard to take that movie seriously anymore scene for scene only because Mel Brooks did such a good job parodying that movie when he made the film Dracula Dead and Loving It. I mean there are scenes in that movie that are just scene for scene absolute parodies. They're perfect so it's kind of hard to go back and rewatch that movie with a straight face. But I still like it and I actually like both films to be honest with you. Vampire. The Journey to Castle Dracula. So this is how the game starts out. Kind of a neat little sense of exposition there with the book. I like that effect they used. The graphics really aren't that bad. It kind of looks like a Super Nintendo game. There's rats everywhere. There's bats. Oh dear. Oh dear. And the music just seems too pleasant for what I'm actually doing right now. The controls are kind of stiff and it just kind of looks kind of strange. It doesn't really look like Dracula. It looks a lot like Castlevania. Like it's really trying to be Castlevania. Something seems wrong. No, no, this is wrong. This is wrong. I don't really know what I'm doing in here. I'm just jumping around, using my sword, which the jumping is really, really hard to do. It just doesn't feel right. It's too stiff or it floats too much. It's just really sensitive. And uh, the enemies, they're hard to kill. They're hard to actually attack with your weapon. You have like a really short range. It's kind of annoying. I don't really know what you're doing in here. What does that symbol mean? It doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah, I don't even know what that is. It's like some kind of little finger, some little claw finger. Killing these rats, they keep coming back, they auto respawn, it's really freaking annoying. Okay, now I can exit, that's good, I wanted to leave. Okay, now it looks like, oh my god, it looks just like Shadows of the Beast 2. Killing spiders, more bats. The gameplay is pretty much side-scroller, action, metroidvania, where you can collect different items for your secondary attack. You have your main attack, which is the sword, which is definitely a little bit short-ranged in my opinion, but that can be changed later. And there is some upgrades that you can do to yourself, and you get points, and there's a little arrow at the top of the screen that tells you where to go, and you know, you got your health bar there at the bottom, and your life bar at the top. For a movie license game, this game isn't really that bad. There's lots of really cool boss battles in this game. They kind of remind me of Castlevania. I mean, look at this giant boss right here with the whip. I mean, tell me this is not some kind of like reference or derivative of Castlevania. You know you can't do it. But it's pretty fun. It's a pretty fun game. The music in this game is really, really good. It reminds me a lot of the movie. It uses a lot of the same kinds of instrumentation. It has a really dark and brooding atmosphere. Definitely reminds me of Dracula. And the sound effects are fine. There's not really a lot of digital voice work or anything like that. It's pretty simple. It's pretty arcadey almost in the sound effects, but they work and they're pretty satisfying to hear. And the graphics in this game are pretty good. I like how detailed they are. There's a lot of color. Everything is really easily differentiated. It's a nice game to look at. It does really look like a Super Nintendo game. I mean, it just has that big, sprite, fat look to it that the Super Nintendo games seem to have. But the game itself looks pretty good, and I'm impressed that it's running so smoothly. There's not really any slowdown. There's a lot of effects in this game that are being used. It's pretty nice stylistically. But it doesn't really look a lot like Dracula a lot of the time. As far as, like, the scenes from this game don't really remind me of a lot of scenes from the movie. Like, this area does not remind me of any scene in the movie Bram Stoker's Dracula. Dracula! 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 
scheduled? I mentioned that this game is kind of hard. I mean, in this scene, you're being chased by these three ghost ladies, and it's freaking hard as crap, and if they touch you, they kill you after a few hits. I mean, they absolutely drain the life out of you. Look at these winches trying to destroy me. Get away. Get away. Oh. The death scream is awesome in this game. You look very dead in that scene. The controls in this game is really my only issue, and that's only because of the way the jumping works. It seems really unreliable, and I like that you have the secondary attack, which is again very much like something that Castlevania would do. And the actual attack that you start out with with the sword is pretty limited in range, and you, you kind of have that Zelda 2 feeling to it, where you just feel like you can't really reach your enemies like you should, and the hit detection is a little bit iffy on that regard as well, just the way the collision actually works with the enemies. It's a little bit iffy, but it's not bad. I mean, it doesn't make the game unplayable. It's still actually a fun game to play. So. Would I recommend this game? Actually, yeah, I would recommend that you play this game. It's a really fun game, and I was really surprised by it. And being a fan of Castlevania, I just like these style of games. And I like the movie as well. So, I mean, why wouldn't I like this game? It's actually pretty fun. So I'd pick it up. This is a fun game. I'd give this game an 8 out of 10. Just because it's a pretty fun game, and it definitely has good music, and the gameplay can be really fun at times. So check it out. Bram Stoker's Dracula on the Sega Genesis. Thanks for watching Game Glyph and don't forget to subscribe. Bye!